All right, guys. Uh, hello there. I'm Damian from forexboat.com, and I'm very happy to see you on th this webinar that is going to be uh, related to high frequency trading. Today, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, although I was the presenter during the last two webinars, which were about Elliott Wave trading and uh, the 1234 guide to identify real breakouts in trading, today, the presenter is going to be our algorithmic trader Vlad Sipos, who is going to talk to you about high fre frequency trading and the art to trade in high frequency. So there are like uh, 12 people over there. Pretty good. 12 people is not bad. So I would like to ask you if you guys are able to hear me and to see the big Forex Bolt logo and to see me, of course. So if you're able to, to see me and to hear me, I would be grateful if you type in something in the chat, something like, hey, Damien, we can hear you. Everything's all set. We're ready to go. So that will work in a very good way for us. OK, somebody, nobody yet. Ah, here you go. Cheers from Germany. Hello. Cheers from Bulgaria, <laughs> from my own uh, perspective. And Vlad, he's from Romania. So we're pretty much in the eastern part of Europe. Audio is good, video as well. That's nice. Hey, Ole, nice to see you again. Kyriakos says he can hear, he can hear me. That's good. Lazar says we're ready to go. Rene says it's all good. You can all see me and hear me. That's very good. Yeah, good. And we have also members from the UK. As I said, I'm located in Sofia, Bulgaria now. Vlad, who is waiting in the background, he is located in Romania. Uh, in Bulgaria, it's currently sunny and warm. Weather is nice. It's been nice during the last couple of days. Otherwise, before that, it was like <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> rain and stuff. Uh, not very good. <laughs> the weather was so bad like in one week ago that it killed all the the cherry production in Bulgaria. So now one kilo of cherries costs like fortune. <laughs> so this is something we <laughs> always make jokes about <laughs> here. But yeah, that's what it is with the weather. Uh, fortunately, we're not going to talk about weather now. We're going to talk about uh, other stuff, high frequency trading. Uh, which uh, you will be able to use for your forex strategies, and which Vlad, I bet you, to explain in a very good way for all of you. So, what we can do now is like 13 people yet. All right, I expect that more people will join, maybe in the next minutes, and and uh, then we will be able to proceed with webinar. Everything's all set. Very good, very good. Ed Wall is here now, writing. That's good. Hello, Ed. Nice to meet you. Well, so we have Germany over here. We have the UK. What other countries do we have here? Where are you guys from? Where are you guys from? Do we have somebody in the States who is awake like <laughs> like uh, maybe 4 a.m.? <laughs> Australia, Denmark. That's good. That's good. I just want to say a few words about uh, this webinar. Uh, we are like a, we're trying to extend the webinar productions per month for our members, the members of the Forex Bowl Trading Academy. And this is why we decided to launch this webinar in the middle of the month. But this doesn't mean that you're not going to get another one in the end of the month. And because a lot of people like uh, were not very happy <laughs> with the time of the webinar, uh, I just want to say that we decided to launch it uh, at this time because we're pretty much trying to cover other time frames. Because, for example, people from Australia, when we do... Uh, when we do a webinar based on the US time, people in Australia are like uh, supposed to 
two attempts during the night. So maybe we can shift between the two time frames, maybe like uh, something like uh, afternoon in the US. And before that, we can do another one like this one, which is uh, in the morning in the UK. And this this way, we pretty much cover the whole the whole world, and everyone is able to attend the webinar. Although, if people are interested and have time, honestly, for me, it's not a problem <laughs> to attend a webinar or to do something in the middle of the night. But anyway, I totally understand the people who are not able to to attend the webinar. Hey, we have a person from Kuala Lumpur. Hello, Lazar. Nice to Nice to meet you. Uh, so also I would like to mention that the webinar will be recorded and then uploaded to our website at forexbo.com slash webinars where we upload all of our webinars so all of our members of Forexbo will be able to see the webinar over there over and over and over again and also the people who are not able to attend so pretty much nobody will be left behind without the webinar don't worry about this everything will be fine that's a very good thing to do and guys uh, since it is already 11 o'clock and 7 minutes uh, I plan to give the word to Vlad Sipos the one who is going to be the presenter today I'm going to shut off my camera and then he will going to turn on his camera so he can introduce himself to you. So I wishing you I'm wishing you a very pleasant time with this webinar and with Vlad. And uh, make sure you participate using the question section and write your questions. We will instantly uh, respond to all of your questions. So now I'm wishing you to have a very nice time and I'm giving the word to uh, Vlad Sipos. Hello everyone, my name is Vlad Shiposh. I am a programmer and forex trader. I will be hosting the, this webinar today about high frequency trading and uh, the art, or like how I, I like to call it, the art of high frequency trading. I will uh, proceed to the next slide so you can read the disclaimer. I will leave it on for uh, one minute or two. So you can read it, and then I will go on with uh, with the presentation. Okay, we will move on now, and uh, if for the people who don't know me, my name is Vlad Shipos. Like I said, I'm a programmer and forex trader from Romania. I started uh, programming in 2008 when I was in, still in high school, and uh, I like it, so I'm doing it every day, almost every day at the moment. And I started programming in C++, then learned a little bit of Java, uh, C Sharp, uh, very little HTML and PHP, and now uh, I'm doing codes for MetaTrader, the MetaTrader 4 platform, which is also a version of C++, and uh, the the trading system that uh, me and one of my friends designed in C sharp. I started trading in 2013 uh, here in Romania. I heard about it on the internet. There is a company here which 
does courses about forex trading, went to an interview and uh, liked it on the spot, knew that uh, this is what I wanted to do and uh, never stopped. In 2014, I learned that, you, I <coughs> that there are programs that can be written for, for the forex market and I started writing expert advisors and uh, custom indicators for the MetaTrader 4 platform and uh, went further on to develop uh, my own uh, trading systems and at the current moment I am coding on a custom built platform in, uh, in high frequency. Uh, I uh, lost my first account in about three months. Uh, I'm telling you this because you should always know that you can lose money in the forex market. I did, most of my friends did, most of the people that I know who are trading lost and only after that they started winning because you have to get accustomed with uh, how trading feels on a personal level, how to manage risk and uh, how it influences you and know how you and not how you influence it. After you will lose, in most cases you will start winning and uh, after that you will start winning a lot more. Currently I'm not trading manually at all I'm only trading uh, using automated systems. Uh, when I say not at all, I'm actually lying. I do place a trade once in a while when, uh, when I see something that I actually like very much and know that has a, a good uh, chance of winning, actually a great chance of winning. Moving on to what is high frequency trading? It is a program trading platform that uses a power, uh, that uses powerful computers to transact a, la a large number of orders at very fast speeds. It uses complex algorithms to analyze multiple markets and execute orders based on market conditions. Typically, the traders with the fastest execution speeds are more profitable than traders with slower execution speeds. Uh, I like this, uh, this definition very much because I think it summarizes all, the, uh, all, the, all that there needs to be said about high frequency trading. This is how I understand high frequency trading and uh, how I use high frequency trading. I call it an art because there is uh, very, there needs to be very much attention to detail when doing high frequency trading because a human cannot perceive or understand the, the times needed to enter a trade and sometimes even exit a trade. There were trades that were placed in milliseconds, so under 10 milliseconds entry and exit and a human physically cannot understand that time because it doesn't, uh, we do not perceive it. Uh, okay, well, I would like to interrupt you just for a second. I apologize. We have a question from Ed Wolf who is asking if you are still using the MetaTrader 4 platform and EAs or you're using another program for high frequency trading. Uh, in the beginning I did use the MetaTrader 4 platform because I didn't know better then. Now uh, I'm using a custom built platform in uh, using the fixed protocol, but I will explain more about fixed protocol uh, later on in this webinar. Uh, why am not using... Is asking again, where do you have your VPS? It's not a VPS. A VPS is a virtual private server. I'm using a dedicated server. I will explain the difference between them later on in this webinar. And it's uh, co-located in Equinix LD4 for uh, traders and brokers in, uh, in Europe and uh, there's another one in uh, Equinix New York 4 which is for uh, brokers and liquidity providers from, from the States. Further on I think that uh, 
I will move to Australia and Japan to see what uh, what other liquidity and execution times I can find there. But at the moment, there are only these two that I currently use. Uh, I will start to say the why I'm not using MetaTrader 4 anymore. It's because uh, the minimum execution time that I ever found on the on MetaTrader 4 platform was 70 milliseconds. It was on rare occasions and only with one broker and uh, on uh, fix, so on the protocol that I'm currently using, the lowest execution time was uh, three, three milliseconds from turn. So I the system sent the order, I received the response that the order was filled in about three milliseconds. So there's a big difference. Also, the average uh, execution time for the MetaTrader 4 on a market or on uh, limits that are cl close to close to the market price is uh, on average 200 between one no 200 milliseconds yeah between 150 and 200 milliseconds and on fix is around 50 50 milliseconds 40 50 milliseconds so there's a very big difference and in, during high volatility times this affects a lot the slippage that uh, that we can get that we get and uh, if uh, if we use limits order limit orders uh, we we in most of the cases we do not get filled so that's why i uh, moved to to this to this new protocol. Any other questions so far? No, I think we're fine for now. It says uh, that you provided a very good answer and he thanks you. You're welcome, my pleasure. Okay, there are uh, a few things that we need to we need to be aware of when we are doing high frequency high frequency trading and uh, the most important one is brokers and what to look for when you are choosing your broker. The first thing would be if it's an A book or a B book. The difference between A book and B book is uh, explained very well in this image. So an A book broker will uh, connect the traders through its servers to the liquidity providers. Uh, most brokers are uh, not uh, proper ECN brokers and uh, DMA ECN uh, they connect you directly to the market without any spread markup, without any delay. Uh, they simply get your trade, put a commission on it, a commission that you know that uh, how much it is and connect you directly to the liquidity providers. And uh, there are not so much, uh, not so, not so much, not, there are not so many brokers that are through ECN. Most of them are uh, STP. This means that uh, they do connect you to the liquidity providers, but uh, they widen the spread and they also charge you a commission. So you end up paying more for for the same uh, for the same results. And a B book broker is a broker that uh, gets your trade. So you send the trade to the broker and it stops there. Brokers do this, so they don't connect you to any liquidity provider because, in their opinion, there is a bigger profit made out of uh, keeping the trade and not connecting it to the liquidity provider. They do this because most of the traders lose on the forex market. I know it's hard to hear, but you should get, uh, should understand that this is true because uh, we know very little about the forex market and uh, 
we cannot, in most cases, we cannot control ourselves when trading. So there is no point for the Forex broker to connect us to liquidity providers if we lose more than we make. The, uh, the broker can keep all, the, all those profits and uh, he's happier with this because the profits made from losing are bigger than the profits gained from commissions and uh, spread markup. Everybody understood this because uh, when I first learned about this, I was a little bit shocked. If there are no questions, I will move on to slippage and execution time. Uh, there are different uh, types of order management for, for brokers. So each broker will uh, manage the order in its own way. Uh, for instance, uh, some brokers will delay the orders. Uh, I send the order right now, I see that the broker received the order and uh, 200 milliseconds later I will get a fail or a reject depending on on the liquidity available and on the prices available. Hey Vlad, sorry for interrupting again. I just uh, want to tell you that uh, there is another question from Ed Wall. Uh, he is asking, how do you tell who is an A or a B broker? Uh, straightforward answer, you can't. They will tell you. Uh, they will tell you when uh, you see differences in execution times you see differences in slippage and uh, after, so if you made profits, when you try to withdraw, withdraw the profits, most brokers, if you use high frequency trading, will not pay you. There are those who pay you, but they will stop you after, after the payout. So when they realize that you were doing high frequency trading and uh, you didn't sell them, you will either be stopped and not receive the, the money you made or you will receive, in the best case scenario, you will receive the money you made and you will be stopped after that. Also, I encountered uh, a broker that had uh, 20 or 30, yeah, between 20 and 30 milliseconds on average execution. And after a day or two, we had 200, 150, 200 milliseconds uh, execution. At that moment, I knew that something changed. And the, the thing that changed was we were moved from the B book that we were when the execution was 20 milliseconds to the A book. And uh, the slippage, why uh, <clears throat> the slippage got bigger, and the execution times got bigger, because brokers take a longer time to to fill your orders if there is if their infrastructure is not uh, very well put in place when they connect you to to the A book to the liquidity providers. So Ed thanks you about uh, this answer and he says that it's very good to know. Also I would like to add one thing uh, if you don't mind about the brokers. As far as I know uh, liquidity providers are able to cover leverage up to 1 to 100. So my advice is that if you see a broker that is giving you a leverage 1 to 400 or maybe 1 to 1500 because I've seen these two. Uh, I don't think this is a like a broker, ECM broker that is connected to liquidity providers. There are also other type of brokers like big brokerage agencies like the top top biggest ones that we constantly see on the TV. They have uh, like uh, the legit accounts as well but uh, they also have the accounts that are not connected to liquidity providers. This is so because if they see you as a trader who is not profitable they prefer that you lose your money to them and not to the liquidity providers. But if they see that you're a profitable broker, they instantly will offer you an ECN account that is connected to liquidity providers. So if you're going to profit, please do it from the liquidity providers and not from the broker. 
and I believe that briefly gives you a picture of what is it about. I mean, I've seen these accounts in different brokers, but if you're a profitable broker, uh, if you're a profitable trader, and you're trading like with a big broker, they will probably offer you the ETN account, which is cool, which is fine, but if you're like a, a trader who is losing money, they will keep you at the casino <laughs> in braces. So I'll give the word to Vlad again, and uh, I hope that uh, helps you. I would like to add something to, to what you said. Uh, most brokers these days will not connect you first to the A book, then to the B book, but the other way around. They will connect you first to the B book because there are more traders that lose money. And after that, if you are making money, they will connect you to the A book. Uh, I forgot where I was. I was uh, talking about the difference. Okay, and uh, also what you should look for uh, in brokers in times of execution is no last look. So the liquidity providers cannot take a look at your order and then reject it if it doesn't like it. Or cannot keep you in a loop until it fills the order. Uh, for instance, for a market order, you place a market order you see that the broker received the order and you wait and you wait and you wait and uh, two, three, five hundred milliseconds later, I even got fills three seconds later for a market order. That means that the broker uh, put, uh, sent the order to the liquidity provider, but the liquidity provider kept your order from getting filled because uh, they have automated systems put in place for uh, for these types of trading. So if you are trying to do high frequency trading, tell your broker that you're doing high frequency trading and uh, that this is what you're looking for, low execution time, low slippage, good liquidity, and uh, they will tell you, okay, we accept this or no, we do not. It's easier, it will save you a lot of time in coding, in uh, testing the broker and a lot of headaches afterwards if you made money. Okay, uh, you will have to check for slippage and execution time. So uh, execution time should be definitely and definitely under 100 milliseconds, but you would like to see around 50 milliseconds execution time if you want to do this type of trading at first. After that you will, uh, brokers will treat you differently because they know that you are profitable for them, you trade high volumes, they make a lot of money from commissions and uh, they will offer you better deals and uh, lower commissions, faster execution, everything you need to make more money because when you make money they also make money and they want to keep this up. Slippage should be low. When I say low I mean uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 pips on average because anything above that can cause you to lose money. Uh, this type of trading is uh, makes profits of uh, on average one to two dollars per every lot traded. So that's uh, one point, two points per every lot traded. If you get a slippage of five points, it means that you're in a loss. It, right from the moment you enter the trade. So you will have to check always the slippage and the execution time because there are, they are very big factors and they are cro close related to one another uh, and they will affect very much your profits. Also, you will have to check the commission because the, if the commission is too big, then uh, the money that you would have made go to the broker. So the maximum commission that I would advise is for three to four dollars for every lot traded wrong term. That's uh, 
two dollars to open the trade maximum and two dollars to close the trade maximum. Anything above above that will make it uh, very very hard for you to actually make money. Okay, now moving on. Uh, question so far. Okay, moving on to liquidity. Uh, this is how you can see prices on level two market data. Uh, this is also very important because this type of trading uh, implies high volumes. So you will be trading, if everything goes well, you will be trading over 10 lots. That's a million dollars in, uh, in broker money. And uh, for us, that's a lot. For, for retail traders, that's a lot. And uh, you will need to check this to see how far can you go at that liquidity at that broker and liquidity provider. You in this image you can see if you see my mouse you can see the bid price the ask price and uh, on the left of the bid of the, of the bid price you will see the quantity. That's the available quantity that you can sell at that particular price. On the right of the ask price you will see the quantity that's the available quantity then you that you can buy at, uh, at that price if your quantity is above that uh, that number you will uh, automatically get filled for in case of the bid you will automatically get filled at lower prices so at worst prices for you when you are trying to sell because uh, there is no more available liquidity at that price and it will automatically get you filled at different prices below the bid price. So for instance, if you place the quantity 500 for, for this broker, you would go to the third price on the list, even so you would get filled at the first, at the second and then at the third price on the list in best cases but you will also have to keep in mind that other traders are also in the market so with the 500 uh, execution you would even get filled below the last price. For the ask is the other way around so if you place uh, in this case 500 it is not uh, even uh, yeah uh, will not will also not get you filled at uh, all the available prices so you, you will get filled even at some prices that we cannot see here so you want to to know that how much liquidity the broker has in order to see how far you can take your trading uh, because if the broker is not liquid enough you will end up getting uh, making very very little money okay and uh, you also want brokers that have fixed protocol fixed protocol uh, is the fastest available way for trading for retail traders what it does is uh, connect to market data and trading and uh, send messages so if you remember from the movies or you may have actually been there when, when this was done in the beginning if you wanted to to buy or sell a stock or a, a currency you had to call your broker find out what the price is then call uh, someone else to fill your trade this is exactly what uh, the fix does it uh, connects you to market data and uh, on one connection you get only market data prices and on another connection you only send the the order uh, the orders it's a very complicated and uh, mm, tricky let's call it tricky way to do it because you have tags everything is uh, it's very hard to read for a human being. I didn't place any any of, uh, of those messages here because it will take a lot of time to explain them. Uh, most brokers will give you a 50 page 
documentation on how to actually interpret those messages and what to do with them. So it's fairly complicated, but once you understand it, you will get uh, execution like, you, like you've never seen before. And uh, it's a standard when you're trying to do high frequency trading because it's the fastest way possible. You don't get, uh, it's Im impossible for us, for retail traders to, to get fields faster than that. Do you have questions so far? Okay, moving on to dedicated servers. Uh, why I said uh, dedicated servers and not VPS is because of this chart. You will see here two, two different task managers. The one on the left is uh, four core with uh, two, logical two logical processors on each core. That means it has uh, a very good processing power. It's not the best, definitely not the best, but uh, it's enough for what I do right now. And on the right, you see a task manager. So the left is a dedicated server. The one on the right is a VPS, which is a virtual private server. So it's a virtual machine inside a dedicated server. It has only three virtual processors. The load that I placed on the on the servers. The dedicated server had uh, two accounts running with uh, a lot of uh, volatility. The one on the right has only one account running with little volatility. You can see that the processor from the VPS is at 42% and uh, the processor from the dedicated server is at 32% with more than double the load on it. Also, uh, because it has more cores, the processes and uh, the threads, uh, it has more processes, so it runs more, more uh, applications at the same time. The one on the left has 58, the one on the right has 47, but the threads for the one on the left are only 773. The threads for one, the one on the right are uh, more than that. So. Uh, the one on the left can finish tasks, tasks faster than the one on the left. So the threads will uh, are uh, fewer in number because it finishes them faster and can start another one faster. It doesn't have to wait for one for the other. Okay, what uh, you must look for when uh, purchasing a dedicated server is collocation, definitely collocation because without collocation the cross connection will be very expensive. Collocation means that uh, if you use a broker from London then you will need to buy a dedicated, uh, to rent, sorry, a dedicated server from London from the same uh, server house. So mine are in Iconex LD4 and my brokers, all the brokers that I trade with are also in Iconex LD4. This means that uh, I can cross connect with them. Cross connection means that you actually get the cable and connect it from your dedicated server to the broker server. It's the fastest way available for us again uh, to to connect to, to the broker. Because if you do not make that cross connection, uh, if when you get the prices, you don't know how those prices will get to you. So they might go to the broker, they might go to the DNS inside the, the server house and then they might go to you. But this is not always the case. Sometimes the load is too much for the direct connection and uh, you will get rerouted, uh, I don't know, maybe in France. And that will make it a lot slower for you to get the prices and also a lot slower for you to, to make the, the orders. So the difference in times 
between uh, cross-connection and not cross-connection is without cross-connection the average the average time for uh, so in most cases you will get if you are collocated you will get four to five milliseconds time between you and the broker but uh, there will also be spikes of 80 to 100 milliseconds only for the message to get from you to the broker and from the broker to you and you don't want this because when you say, yeah Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, Ed is asking if this is the same switch. Mm, can you please elaborate the question, Ed? All right, Ed. Can you give us a better like uh, explanation of your question so Vlad can answer? Maybe he's writing it right now. All right, you can simply uh, keep going, and when uh, if he gives another reply to the question, I will simply get back to you again. Okay, uh, until then, I will try to answer it from another perspective. So, when you are not cross-connected, you don't know how the messages go to the broker and from the broker to you. It's impossible. It's possible to know, but not all the time. So when you do a trace tracer, it's a command in uh, in Windows. You will see that there are a certain number of hoops. So it will go from you to some somewhere else, then to somewhere else, then to somewhere else. Then it will get back to your broker, and you don't want that. When you are cross-connected, the only hoop that there will be is from you to the broker. And you want that because it's a constant. And you like constants because constants you can control. You want to control everything when so you want to control as most as as much as you can when you are doing uh, high frequency trading because what you cannot control can hurt you. And when you're trading a lot of volumes, it can hurt you very, very bad and cost you a lot. So hey, Vlad, uh, I got another question in the meantime uh, from Rene Patrick. Uh, and then we got another one from Ed. But let's start with Rene. So what is Rene asking? His question is that uh, uh, he says that Mr. Haim Bodek wrote a book about high frequency trading and techniques, techniques like spoofing, spam, and cancel hide and light, and even particular order types, ISO, FOC, uh, which are not accessible to every retail traders and therefore will give retail high frequency traders a disadvantage because of other flow discrimination. He's asking, what is your take on this problem and did you encounter those? This is not true if you use fixed protocol. Uh, for one of my brokers, I had uh, eight pages long uh, documentation only for order types and filling types. So this is not true anymore in, in case you use fix. You get, uh, also depends on the broker of course. There are brokers that will give you uh, what you want and there are brokers that will not give you what you want. You have to ask, and uh, they will tell you, okay, we can do this for you, or we cannot. Uh, but it's not true anymore, because uh, technology is available for uh, everyone uh, at this current time. Uh, I don't know how to explain this better, but I hope you do understand that you can get uh, what you want, if the broker has it, it will give it to you. If you make, if you make uh, the broker money, that's all they are interested in making money. And if you do that, they will give you what you ask for. Okay, Vlad, that was a very good answer to the question and very comprehensive one, <laughs> even more comprehensive uh, than the question. 
So, uh, uh, yeah, Rene says question, question answered. Fix protocol will fix this. Thank you. This is what he says. And in the meantime, Ed wrote an explanation of his question. He is asking, are you connected to the same set of switch hierarchy as in the same premises switch service? For example, Cisco switches farm. Honestly, I don't know how to answer this question because I still don't understand it. But what cross connection does is uh, you have a number of sockets. So let's say that uh, this is you, right? This is your private server, your dedicated server. It has a number of sockets for connection to the outside uh, on internet or on direct connection. This is the broker. It has a lot more sockets than you do, but it also has sockets. What cross connection does is plug a cable into your socket and do uh, connect it directly to the broker server. This is what cross connection means, and uh, it's the fastest way you can connect to to a broker. If this doesn't answer the question, please give me more details about it so I can answer it properly. Uh, okay, moving on to performance like I showed you in the photo in this picture. Performance will uh, is a great factor because you can run multiple systems on a good dedicated server and on uh, on a BPS you cannot because it simply doesn't have enough processing power to do what you want. Also, uh, if the server is not uh, uh, good enough, is not performant, uh, you will get uh, very big uh, soft latency and this is also an important factor when uh, when you're doing high frequency trading. Soft latency means uh, so you get the price from the broker how much time will it take you from the moment that the price was received to process the price and if everything if every condition is met send the order. It's a very big uh, it's a very important thing because if it uh, takes you more than 10 milliseconds, in 10 milliseconds the price can change over 10 times during high volatility. And uh, on the server from the left, it uh, takes on average one millisecond. That's one price change that can happen, but I'm okay with that because uh, at the moment, I don't know how to do it faster. And on the one from the right, uh, it takes 45. On, on the one from the right, sorry, it takes four, It takes even 45 as uh, milliseconds during high volatility. And that's a lot. You want to be able to process everything as fast as you can so you can be one of the first people in line when the or when uh, the liquidity is divided between the orders any questions so far any other questions so far okay it says that you managed to answer his question uh, it appears that the question was that if the switch uh, farm is the same and he says yes the question is answered so Good job. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to strategies. The most widely used for retail traders is arbitrage. Arbitrage means that uh, so there are a lot, a lot, a lot of ways to to arbitrage. Uh, the one of the first ways that people made arbitrage was find differences between between different different liquidity providers, different brokers, and for instance, uh, if uh, for Euro, Euro USD for the Euro, Euro USD pair, 
if you find a big enough difference to cover your uh, slippage, your commission for, bo for both brokers, you can buy at uh, the one from uh, which has the lower price and sell for, for sell at the one that has uh, a bigger price and uh, after that close both trades and you will make a profit. This is the most basic way that you can do arbitrage. I will not go further into this because a Google search will give you a lot of answers and you can take your pick, try it and see and see how it goes for you. But these days, it's uh, that difference is in the range of milliseconds again, and that's why you need fast, fast execution. Uh, if you do arbitrage, your trading will look, your chart will look like this. You, if you can see there, there are a lot of trades. Mm. Uh, most of them made a small profit, some of them made a big loss, but uh, on uh, overall the average is uh, between one and two dollars on each lot traded. So let's say that you perform a hundred trades, let's be conservative and say you perform a hundred trades and you make only one dollar each lot traded. If you trade every time with one lot, that's $100 per day. For a retail trader, I think that's good enough because you can make that on uh, small accounts, not so small because brokers will only give you fix for a $10,000 account. So on a $10,000 investment, you can make $100 each day if your software is good. I think that's pretty pretty good. It means to 20% each month. At the end of the year, you made uh, 2000, 20, $24,000 on a $10,000 $10, investment. If you perform 1,000 trades or 100 trades with uh, more volume, you can do the math and you will see that the results are, uh, are way better. After that we have news-based news high-frequency trading systems. Uh, what these systems usually do is uh, connect to, to news feeds. So, there are types of connections that will give you news as fast as uh, they can. So if the news was released right now, in the co next couple of milliseconds you will get that news. You can interpret it and place a trade based on, uh, on its results. And uh, usually it makes profit. Here you have a news-based uh, a news based trade that uh, made seven made a couple of pips profit and uh, then was closed you can also do this i these are the two types of high frequency trading that i do at the moment and uh, they have pretty pretty good returns. I will look f uh, for forward further into this and uh, find other types of uh, strategies that make money. And also, I saw on the tick chart, so you can even perform analysis on tick charts and uh, do classical trading strategies based on them, because even ticks have. Uh, certain uh, period, so certain patterns that um, that they constantly work, move around and if you can understand them and uh, know how to calculate them, you will uh, end up making a profitable trading strategy. 
so far any other questions okay moving on to costs I will be forward with you and say that the cost are costs are pretty big so the minimum account size for a fixed account is ten thousand dollars on uh, average the cost for using the fix is one thousand dollars each month uh, that's only broker costs um, also you pay commissions which are cutting way way down in your profits and um, that's about oh if you want to cross connect the broker will tax you for it then we have the engine because if you want to to use the fixed protocol you will need the fixed engine a fixed engine is uh, some t uh, some sort of decoder for for the message received and sent through fix so uh, we we as people can understand it better it's user friendly it it creates a user friendly message for for the user there are also uh, free free uh, engine so free, free fix engines online i don't use them because honestly i don't trust them so much and from what i read online there they are not to be trusted when trading high volumes because you don't know what can go wrong and at what time something can break in it or have an error but what you can use them for is understand because they are free so you can understand how the fixed protocol works how to interpret the message how to create a new message how to send an order and so forth and you can also use them to develop your own fix engine but that will take a lot of time uh, if you decide to buy a fix engine it will cost you a few hundred dollars each month so not so cheap for for a retail trader and also you have a server server costs which range between uh, 300 to 1000 dollars depending on performance and uh, what you want from from that server to be able to do also uh, if you want to cross connect the server will also uh, so the server provider will also charge you money for it because i don't know the reason seems like that little bit of bit of cable costs a lot uh, the little the least that I have paid for a cross connect was fifty dollars and uh, the most was one thousand for only for the cross connect so costs are big but if you manage to do it right the the profits will will exceed the costs uh, the, the profits will exceed the costs a lot. Now I am basically done with what I wanted to talk to you about. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Great job, Vlad. Absolutely perfect, flawless presentation. And now let's see if we're going to get some questions from the guy. Uh, just want to let you know that you can ask totally everything related to the topic. Uh, Vlad uh, will be happy to answer, and even I, if, if I can, I can also, you know, <laughs> uh, I can also participate with answering the questions. So if you want to say something, or uh, uh, you simply have a question in mind, or something that is bugging you with your trading system, something, this is the right place to do it. Feel free to use the question sections and uh, type in your question and we will be happy to help you uh, with uh, your issue. That's a good thing. All right, Ed says that uh, this is a great information. You covered most of you wanted to know. 
which is a pretty much a very good feedback. Uh, Rene is asking which broker is Vlad using in particular, but uh, I believe it is uh, not good to involve brokers and names no. currently because we're pretty much trying to to keep uh, this from personal perspective and uh, not to involve like. Uh, pretty much companies that not related to our field of operations. So if you have other questions, we would love to answer. Yeah, Rene says, sure, yeah. <laughs> of course, let me turn on my camera so you can see me too. Hello, that's me again, Damien. And this is Vlad over here at the top. <laughs> so guys, if you have more questions, uh, we will be happy to answer. Vlad is here for you. He's our like uh, Forex programmer guy, the one who is familiar with uh, MQL4, 5, and algo trading in general. So if you uh, if you are posting something in our uh, private community, the group in Facebook, make sure you tag him uh, at Vlad Sipos, and he will be there for you to help you with your issue. In the meantime, if you have other questions here related to the presentation. Uh, Vlad will be happy to answer and to help you with your issue. Otherwise, I believe that it was a very nice experience to discuss this topic uh, regarding high frequency trading. I believe that we all learned a lot of stuff and also when Vlad answers to questions, he is uh, very comprehensive which is extremely useful uh, for the people that are willing to learn and to improve their trading style and of course their trading systematicity. So I believe it was a pretty nice experience. Uh, one more thing I remembered. Uh, sorry for interrupting you, but this is a very important piece of information that I'd like to share. I, when I first started, I wanted to see how other people do it. So I went online and uh, purchased software that uh, did what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, I wasted money because the software did not perform as advertised and uh, I lost money by paying for the software, lost money by paying for the server, lost money by paying for uh, the, the losses on the account, lost money all the way. So everything made me made me lose money. If and uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, Damien, please stop me if I'm not. If you decide to purchase one of those softwares online, I can tell you what to look for and uh, what are the red flags. Okay. Uh, so if you purchase one of those softwares, you definitely must ask for some quantifiable way of uh, of seeing the results. So for instance for a MyFix book link that uh, will, uh, will show you the results from that software during the current days. So the last that you, so the further back that you want to go is last week. If it's not from last week at least, if it's this week, if it's today, great, but if it's not last week of least, don't buy it. Mm. If, uh, the bro if the guy that, or girl that sells, uh, sells this doesn't want to show you, don't buy it. Also, check uh, for withdrawals from those accounts. If it's not a live account and no withdrawals were made from that account, don't buy it. If uh, what else? If they uh, ask you to sign something for not getting your money back, don't buy it. If they don't provide support for at least two or three months, don't buy it. If uh, Uh, ask okay, Ed, Ed is uh, asking a question. Sorry for interrupting you, man. Uh, Ed is asking a question. Uh, if this was the MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5 EAs, I believe he's talking about uh, 
the experience you just mentioned? Uh, anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. MT4, MT5, C Trader, anything. If it's an automated system and you cannot see recent results, or the the guy that's selling it doesn't want to show you what I just mentioned, don't buy it. It's usually crap. <laughs> that's interesting to know. Uh, and Ed, Ed, thanks you for the good advice. And in the meantime, Ole Kokholm is asking. Uh, uh, it's more of an advice. He says, Vlad, maybe you could in the Facebook group write some of your recommendations for us to look for. And this is what I meant too. Uh, Vlad uh, is uh, totally in the group and he participates in the group. And he will he can totally write you some recommendations, uh, a lot, a lot of stuff. So feel free to tag him in comments or just to ask him questions or whatever. We're constantly over there in this group to participate. Also, I strongly encourage you all to participate in the Facebook group so we can discuss trading ideas. It is getting better and better in the group. A couple of days ago, I started uh, like a new thing in the group, which is a live trading sessions uh, with me, and we can do one with Vlad in future maybe, uh, where I simply randomly without notification, I did it that way the first time, I share my screen, I open a chart and we start discussing with, uh, with people and it's a very nice experience because people are like asking me questions in the comment and I pretty much analyze the chart, uh, drawing trend lines, support resistance levels, Fibonacci levels, indicators and it is a pretty nice experience because uh, we're we're free to talk whatever we want and uh, a lot of people ask me about many forex pairs maybe we discuss like five or six or seven forex pairs and many questions were were answered and since we're probably most of us are constantly looking at the charts uh, maybe it's a nice experience and probably I will launch today another live trading session the thing was that the first time I wanted to test if the software works it appears that the software works in a very good way, so I'm able to share my screen anytime while looking at the chart, and we can talk about charts. Uh, uh, Chuam Ming Li is asking about the Facebook link of the group. Uh, Chuam, I just wanted to ask you, aren't you a member of our community? Because since you are looking at this webinar now, it means that you're a part of our private members, meaning that you have total access to the Facebook group. Uh, where we can discuss uh, trading opportunities. So maybe you are not. So I would encourage you, please send me an email at support at forexbolt.com and uh, send me your Facebook email address and I will totally add you in the group instantly because uh, since you are a member, this is your right to participate in this group and you shouldn't like skip <laughs> your opportunities uh, to be part of this community. I repeat again, send me an email at support at forexbolt.com and I will I will totally uh, approve your request uh, to join uh, in the group. So guys, I would like to ask you if you have any more questions for Vlad. Maybe you have some other questions about uh, the high frequency trading, the presentation he did. Maybe something about brokers or stuff and uh, if there are no questions maybe it is time to finish this webinar also I would like to remind you that in the end of the webinar you are uh, Ed says thank you Vlad great pre great presentation and I totally agree with him very nice presentation also I would like to remind you that in the end of the presentation uh, you will see a poll where you can rate uh, you can vote uh, how good the webinar was. So I remember I remind you that uh, you can vote from one to five, where one is bad, five is woohoo, very good. So um, Chris says that he joined late in the group. Uh, he rewatch uh, when it's on Facebook. Thank you, guys. Oh, oh, hey, probably he's saying about the webinar from for the live trading session. No worries, Chris. Everything is on record. If you're talking about the webinar, the webinar will be live at forexbolt.com slash webinars. So we pretty much keep all our webinars over there. So you can uh, you can access the webinar over there. 
All right, guys, since there are no more questions, I would like to thank you very much for uh, your attendance uh, in this webinar. We were like 18 people, so it was a pretty nice experience. A lot of questions were answered by Vlad, that guy over here. Uh, he is very good in what he's doing, and he's totally available for you in the Facebook uh, in the Facebook private community. So feel free to ask your questions uh, over there. Uh, he will be there to answer for you. Thank you very much again for your attendance. It was a total pleasure for us. Uh, there will be, I remind, there will be another webinar for our private members at the end of the month. Still not sure about the date, but we will create an event, and I will try to announce it at least one week in advance. So we'll be able to participate. Uh, Rene, thank you to you too. You have a nice weekend too. Again, guys, thank you very much. Thank you for your attendance. And I hope I will see you at the next webinar of Forex Both. Thank you, and I wish you a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.